This is how not to build a pergola. Welcome to Busy Bee Living. Today we are going to address this issue on the pergola. So first we need to find the center point because these beams are starting to sag in the middle. We easily mark it with our square and drive a screw right into the center of these 2x4s that have encased the beam. Hang our little plumb and mark the center with a quick spray of marking paint. Now with the center point transferred from the top to the base and clearly marked, we can recruit neighbor Bob over. We're gonna bust out our brand new auger here and give it the full test. We're gonna take it to the extreme depth it can go. I wish I had an extension for this, but I do not and I could not find any anywhere. So we took it as far down as we could go and then finished off with the post hole denigrator. Now we took these all the way down to 48 inches, that way we could put the quick tubes right into it without having to do any cutting or anything like that. Not difficult to cut, just, well, we figured we had the auger, so why not do it? Now we gotta go ahead and go to the other side, which should be just as smooth as the other. But as you can see, we are come up to a point right here. Yeah, it's hitting something hard. And we're going to go ahead and find out, well, we got a nice little rock in the way. I got a rock. And by little, I mean not little at all. And it was too far down to get like a hammer drill and bust up the rock and pull it out. So we literally had to dig that rock out of the way. There's no way to work around this. It's exactly where we want the post. So after very long day of working at this we ended up finally loosening up the rock enough so we could get it loose and that is the hole we had to dig And did I mention it was a big rock? So now with the rock removed, we actually are returning all the dirt back into the hole. And using this 2x4, since it's so deep down there, to compact it until we can bring the tamper. And the next day, because I was pretty exhausted after all that, we go ahead and remark and drill our hole with the auger. And luckily, this one went much better. No rocks in the way, and we're able to take it all the way down to the 48 inch depth that we wanted. Now we're bringing these quick tubes to the exact level of the paver, so we want to double check that, make sure we're good to go. So now we can get ready to start pouring the concrete. First thing I do is take a 2x4 and just tamper down the dirt that's on the bottom. I'm going to add a thin little layer here of gravel, and then we can go ahead and bring our concrete and start filling this hole. Now we're going to pour the concrete, the whole bag, into the hole, but we're only going to pour one bag at a time. Use the old foot pour technique here. Get a good calf workout. Just make sure you use the other foot on the next hole because you don't want uneven calves. It just does not look good. But once it settles down in there, we add the appropriate amount of water to the bag ratio, and you can find this directions on the back of the bag.
And just like every other dad, you need to stop and stare into the hole. Like I said, we need to keep repeating this process on both sides. So while the one bag was sitting and absorbing some of the water on the other side, I went ahead and dumped the other bag in on the other. Now we can come back to this side, add another bag to it, pour the appropriate amount of water into it, and keep working our way back and forth until we reach the top of the quick tube. See, we want this to be exactly level with the pavers. So we're going to go ahead and use our handy little 2x4 here in line with the pavers just to make sure it's all nice and smooth and level and we are good to go. So now we're here, and it looks like the next day, but you know my schedule, it was not the next day. And we go ahead and recruit neighbor Bob to help us. We are going to get our six by six post in place here, but first we need to bolt down these metal brackets. So we drill the hole, use an air blowout there to get all the dust out. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use this epoxy here. Now it, moves fast and unfortunately I don't have it on camera I don't know what happened and I looked for the footage can't find it but once you put it in there make sure you put that bolt down make sure it's at the right depth that you need it at and then easily bolt down the brackets but now that that's complete we can cut down our six by six posts to the proper height that we need and shockingly I'm I'm pretty sure this is the first time ever we nailed both posts on the first measurement. We didn't have to trim anything off. I don't know if that's a good thing because if we were shy the other way, that would have been really bad, but we nailed it. So uh, good day and uh, good cutting by a neighbor Bob. So now we can see we're going to go ahead and bring the six by six posts into place. Make sure that it's lined up perfectly with the bracket and the top. We're just gonna go ahead and quickly check, make sure we're good. This is not 100%, it doesn't have to be accurate because you can see we're gonna go ahead and take away those temporary supports that, yeah, we were using car jacks for. But now that it's supporting the weight, now here's where we would need to check it to make sure it's in the proper position. Once we figure that out, we can go ahead and add the screws to the bottom. And right here, we're going to, in the future, get some L brackets, I guess they're called for the top to secure the top to the beam. But in the meantime, we're just gonna drive some screws in there just to hold it in place. Now that the posts are put into place, we need to remove the dirt from around it so we can put our pavers back in. Now we're just going to clear out that dirt that was pulled out from our auger and work our way all the way around it so the pavers can come back in. We just reused the leveling sand underneath. I did grab some extra bags in case I needed it, but it worked out quite well and we'll see how it holds up. Also, while I was clearing this out, I came across this like giant root. So we went ahead and cleared out as much as that as we could while we're in there, mine as well. So we can go ahead and make sure that these pavers don't get pushed up in the future. Now that everything is looking good, we're gonna grab our rubber mallet bring some pavers and this is what we're going to use to tamper down the dirt to make sure we're in a good position. 
just keep hitting it down and building up the base and then hammering it back down until the paver is level and secured in the proper position. We went ahead and we did all the paver pieces that we don't need to make cuts at first. This is going to make the process a little bit easier so we can go ahead then and once we have them in place we can go ahead and make measurements to the pavers that we need to cut to go around the quick posts. Here is my very accurate, fancy technique of just eyeballing it. Take our angle grinder with a diamond bit in here, and we're just gonna score the pavers themselves. Now, on this one, I did not score the bottom, as you can see. So when I went ahead and used the chisel and hammer to bust that off, well, it broke. So it was much easier if I just took the time to make that extra score mark on the bottom as I did in the future pavers, but this one needed a little bit of trim up. But you can see, even the eye, boom, perfect. Like who needs like to measure things? Now some of our pavers aren't just one simple little knockoff. We're gonna have to make multiple cuts on these. And I do them in two different ways so you can decide what you wanna do. This first one is a much simpler way to do it, but the appeasing eye it won't look as good, especially if this doesn't get covered up as these will with some decorative cedar to trim in and make that beam look better. But all we're going to do is we're going to score it straight down and make a nice line. So we split this into two different cuts here. And this is the first one. We're going to clean it up, make sure that we have it fitting properly. And now we can go ahead and take that piece that we cut off and put the angle cut onto it. This is a much simpler process, but like I said, it doesn't look as good. Also, as you're putting these pavers back, you'll find it easier sometimes to remove some of the straight pavers so you can move in the cut ones. And it's much easier to do this this way than to try to finagle that into its position. Now here is what I was talking about needing multiple angles. The other one we did, we just did a straight cut. Here we're going to go ahead and try to make both of the cuts in one so the piece will stay in one solid piece. And yes, I finally broke down and grabbed a measuring tool for this. So now that we got our measurements locked in there, we can go ahead and take our angle grinder and score the paver to the lines that we need this thing to break. Now you gotta flip it over and you wanna score the back side of it. So we're gonna retake those measurements so everything is gonna line up properly for us. And if everything goes right, this should break perfectly like we want it to. Now for the moment of truth. Couple pavers, get our chisel, get our hammer, and whew, look at that. 
just like we wanted it. And there you go. All the papers are put back in place and it is starting to look good. Now we got to clean up all that dirt and mud all over our pavers because we are going to start preparing to put our sand in between these pavers. But we're going to hold off for another video on that and you can see that linked right here. So thank you guys for watching and supporting the channel. We'd love to earn your subscription and as always, take care and thanks for buzzing by.